People in favour of relaxing the abortion laws, uh, as I said, they've been celebrating a resounding victory. Uh, 66.4% in favour of repealing the abortion law against 33.6%. Uh, campaigners against it have called it a tragedy of historic proportions. But these women gathered in to celebrate in Dublin. We've been working so hard for women's rights for so many years now and we can see... It's finally coming true. Ireland has finally grown up. Face the fact, don't shift her abroad to you here safely. Me, for my daughters and my grandchildren. Well, this debate has been hard fought on both sides, with the Catholic Church among those leading the opposition to liberal abortion laws. But what, if any, relevance will that result have for people in Northern Ireland? And, of course, here in England, well, one leading anti-abortion campaign group says it'll add pressure on British authorities to become even more liberal in their attitude than they currently are. Uh, Liam Gibson is from the Society for the Protection of the Unborn Child and joins me now. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. Now, this might seem a big claim, you know, that the the results of the Irish Republic is going to have, you know, that big knock-on effect. Why, why should authorities here be swayed by what has happened in another country? I don't think the authorities necessarily will be swayed by the, what's happened now in, in the Republic of Ireland. But certainly the uh, abortion movement, the abortion lobby, uh, which is led by uh, big abortion providers, some of the... Uh, some of the biggest abortion providers in the world, such as Murray Stopes International and British Pregnancy Advisory Service, which make uh, literally uh, hundreds of millions of pounds from abortion, uh, they have a campaign which is aimed at uh, eliminating any kind of restriction uh, in, in England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland uh, and taking abortion completely out of out of the even the, the the very, very liberal legislation of the 1967 Abortion Act. So it's going to certainly add momentum to that campaign. On paper, at the very least, the proposals that are being put forward in the Irish Republic are actually more liberal than the 67 Act. And we've seen that uh, already in, in the Isle of Man, even though it's a, a, a tiny jurisdiction, the the trend towards liberalising abortion laws is is well underway. Also, you have to remember that there's considerable uh, efforts to limit freedom of conscience under the 1967 Abortion Act. We've, we've seen recently uh, two Glasgow midwives uh, having their case rejected by the, the Supreme Court in London. Uh, you know, telling them they they basically had to have complicity in abortion. That's now, even worse for, for GPs. There's mm -hmm. attempts now to limit uh, freedom of speech, especially towards giving information to women who might be considering an abortion so let them know about alternatives. Now, this debate, it's caused a big divide between the different sides. So what do you think should happen now? The, uh, what is, is, is likely to happen now is that Ireland is going to become much more like Britain in its treatment of... Uh, of human life in general, but in particular towards those who are considered to be imperfect. Uh, uh, very often, uh, children once once you allow for children to be eliminated before birth because of a defect, and sometimes that can be as little as a you know a cleft palate or a club foot, then that has an impact on how the, the weak and the vulnerable and the disabled and the infirm are treated across the whole of society. And there's been increasing calls after 50 years of, of abortion in Britain to allow for what's termed uh, uh, post-birth abortions, where children who are, dis uh, who are judged to have um, incurable conditions should be simply uh, put to death. You know, infanticide and abortion are very, very closely linked. And the people who will be most uh, disturbed by this result in the, the Irish referendum are going to be the families of special needs children who, who have seen what, what abortion has done in Britain, where nine out of every ten children who are diagnosed before birth with, with Down syndrome never see the light of day. So there's quite a, a big population of, of Down's people in the Irish Republic but simply because they weren't aborted uh, on the same level that they have been in, in England.
Now, there's always that argument given, isn't there, about uh, you know the the anti-abortion league that oh, you know, you know, babies who have birth defects are automatically you know going to be terminated. There is that assumption that people will do that, which isn't always the case. So, why not just accept the result? Because the Irish people have spoken, so inevitably. Uh, the Irish public will now move towards a more secular liberal society. I mean, the Irish Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, he said, referring to the No campaign, he said, I know today is not welcome. You may feel this country has taken the wrong turn, that this country is one you no longer recognise. I want to reassure you that Ireland today is the same as it was last week, but more tolerant, open and respectful. He's a birthiest liar. He told people whenever he stood for election the last time that he was pro-life and would not support uh, abortion legislation. So how, what credibility has Leo Varadkar and his government left? None. He, the, the man's a birthfest liar. He, he is a, a hypocrite of the, the highest magnitude, and no one can believe a single word that he says. This has changed everything, changed it utterly, because uh, human life is not disposable. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it was uh, 99% of the people in the Irish Republic who voted to eliminate children before birth. That doesn't make it right. Human, uh, human life is of, uh, of value regardless of any condition, regardless of the, the conditions of, of conception, regardless of the physical or mental disabilities of, of the individual. That's Liam Gibson from the Society for the Protection of the Unborn Child.